Okay, so we've completed the login system. Uh, we're able to log ourselves in if our account is activated. Um, and uh, obviously we're going to be dealing with the email activation later, but we've got this problem that we've come across now that we need to output any errors that occur uh, during uh, the session. Uh, or sorry, during the, the login process. So if for example I was to provide an incorrect password and I go ahead and click login, uh, we see this array which is fine, we're, we're returning any data um, that, you know, any errors that, that are relevant to this, this login process. However, what we're not doing is displaying them in a way that makes sense to the user. Um, if we had say three, er three different errors, um, for example, or two different errors in this case because uh, the only time we can have uh, two uh, more than one error is if one of these uh, is true which will only be one and then whether this one's true here um, so uh, it will be say for example um, oh actually no so it, it'll only really ever show one of these but if we had more checks so for example uh, the string length of the data that's entered we might want to validate that um, then that might come, uh, you might say for example enter a really long username and you're checking the string length against say the maximum of, I don't know, uh, however much we set it to, so 26 or, or 30, whatever we set it to. Um, but you may have more than one error, that's why we store them in this array, because we can append to the array and store as many errors as we like. So we're just going to be showing, um, well, let, let's go ahead and, and give an example. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, create a, another check for the string length, just so we can demonstrate more than one output. Um, so I'm going to say here, um, uh, let's just say else. Um, and by the way, this isn't really the way we should be doing it. We should be appending it onto here, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it in here just to demonstrate. So if you wanted to add any additional validation, you can um, you, you can add it either to the else if, uh, which would be the more appropriate way to do it because um, it would sort of chain downwards, or you could include it within this else, which would, um, you know, it would output two errors. So it, it, we might um, not enter a username in one field. Um, oh, sorry, no, we, we, we might get to this stage where we say else and then we have, you know, more than one error. So we might have a long username or long password and the username and password combination might be correct. So what we're aiming for here is um, to have uh, a string length check and we're going to purposely enter the, uh, the incorrect username and password. So I'm going to say if string length, so using the string length function, um, of the username and we need to uh, go ahead and pull up our uh, database table uh, so let's look at the structure here and um, we've got a 32 maximum on the username and the password um, remember that the the password will be uh, 32 characters because we're we're using um, an md5 hash here and it will uh, most of the time render to a 32 character string um, so in this case, we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll check the username. Remember, this is just, you know, as an example. So if the string length username is greater than 32, uh, then we want to append something onto our errors array. Uh, and this is going to be uh, username too long. OK, so this is just a pure example. You like I said, you may have other uh, requirements for this system. Um, so um, inside of here, let's go ahead and just type in Alex and we'll copy and paste that a few times. Uh, and then we'll do the same for password. We'll just paste anything in. Now you see when I click, uh, oh, we can't find that username. Have you registered? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Okay, so let's change this to password. And I'll say password too long. Again, it's an example. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just paste a load of load of stuff in here. So now what's going to happen is the username is going to be found, the password and the username combination are going to be incorrect. So we'll have um, password is too long and that username and password combination is incorrect. So if you're struggling to understand this concept, I'd go through and sort of um, work out how you want to do things. So you might want to, I mean this in this instance is more useful in a registration form because you may want to display that the username is missing, the first name is missing. Uh, and signify which fields the user has to has to do in. So when we get to the uh, the registration form, this will be a bit different. Um, 
but anyway, for now, uh, we need to go ahead and develop this uh, this functionality. Let me just go and put that back in. I don't know why I removed it. Uh, this functionality to output uh, these errors properly. Okay, so we're going to be creating a function called output errors. And um, what this function is going to do is it's going to take this array. It's going to loop through each element of the array and return an unordered list. Uh, so it's quite not strange, but it might be something that you're not used to. So what we're going to do is um, is uh, we're actually just going to think about the the setup of this logically. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this header uh, include just down here, and I'm going to include it here. And then here, I'm just going to sort of get rid of, rid of everything. And then in here is going to go my markup. So uh, let me just spell that correctly. So we're getting the same uh, we're getting the same look and feel to this. Um, it works exactly the same way. Um, however, we are doing all of the logic up here at the top of our uh, page, and any output is going to go in here. So we're doing the logic at the top and the output down here. So um, another thing we need to do is if um, if uh, the 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 data is not empty, so i.e. It, there's something in it then we do this stuff here but otherwise we actually need to do something we need we need to do something because uh, if we were to just land on this login.php page uh, let me just give an example I'm going to say echo landed and this is coming from the else from this uh, first if statement here you can see this red this this has been highlighted here else echo landed so, for example, if I go to log in with just a load of rubbish details, uh, nothing happens. If I just go and land on this page, we get this landed up here. So we know that we don't want the user to just land on on uh, on this page. Now we can do several things. We can append something to the uh, errors array. Um, so I'm just going to say sort of no no data received. Okay, yeah, no data received. Um, but you can you can redirect them with a header redirect. Um, you know it, it it doesn't make a difference. But yeah, let's go ahead and, and get this errors uh, function out of the way with. Okay, so we've got our markup here. This is where we're going to be doing all the logic. So um, we know that now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we haven't created a general functions. Oh, we have. Okay, so I'm going to use the general function um, file for this because it sort of comes under general functions. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, and create this uh, output errors um, function. So uh, we obviously say output errors, and uh, what do we need to pass in? Well, we need to pass in an array, and that will just I'm just going to call that errors in this case. So we're going to define a variable called output, and that's going to be an array. Um, so actually, no, we don't need to do that. Oh no, we do. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to loop through the errors and we're going to put them inside of this output variable. Um, uh, actually, no. There's a there's a lot easier way. There's a one line way that we can do this. Um, uh, and do bear with me. In fact, I might do it the the long way first. So yeah. Okay. So output equals array. Uh, I'm going to use a for each construct, and this basically will loop through the elements of the array. So we're going to say for errors as error. Now what this will do is I'm just going to echo error for now, um, and I'm going to append say a comma onto it um, inside of login.php. Let's just close that. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll say uh, output errors error errors so we're passing this errors variable that we're appending to this array that we're appending to into this output errors function and we now know that we're going to go through each of these and just output them with a comma so I'm going to refresh no data received we've got a comma on the end there if I type Alex and then an incorrect password the username combination is incorrect so we, we can already see this and if I was to go ahead and enter Alex and then a really long password as I did before uh, we've got password too long, comma, that username password combination is incorrect. So we, we're outputting more than one error. Uh, in this case, we don't want to do that. We want to append to this new variable, uh, this new uh, array, sorry. And what we want to do is we want to put this within li tags, which will eventually go within a, an unordered list um, item, uh, element. 
So um, we place the error within these. And then what we do is here, we return. And we, again, we need to use a UL. And this is where it starts to get slightly tricky. Uh, we want to go ahead and um, append something on here. Um, in fact, I've used commas here where they should be um, dots, if you like. Okay, so I'm going to um, implode within here. And implode's basically going to take, um, it's going to, it's the opposite of explode. Explode will take a string and have a character uh, that it wants to explode by, and it will place each object, or each uh, string or whatever, um, into an, an array. Um, this will sit, do the opposite and it will use an array and it will put it into a string. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to uh, set the, um, the delimiter there which is just nothing and then we want to pass through the output. So this might look confusing but essentially what we're doing is we're taking each error and placing it into an li element and then we are returning uh, the imploded of um, this output here. So we're basically placing each error within its own li tag, if you like, or element within this ul element. So let's go ahead and, and uh, check this out in the browser. Um, what's happened? There? Oh, sorry, yeah, we're returning this value, so we need to go ahead and echo output errors. Okay, so now we've got um, an unordered list. I'm going to go ahead and inspect this. Uh, you can see we've got a ul and then li here and li here. Beautiful. It's worked perfectly. So we've got UL, LI, LI, UL. So the errors contained within LIs. And this is a really semantic way to display your errors. So this is why we're doing it this way. I know it's long-winded, but um, you know, if you can get your head around this, you can get your head around pretty much anything. Um, so there is an easier way to do this. We could obviously uh, skip all of this step here, and we could just pass in the errors. But we need to make some additional changes. We need to say LI here. We need to end the LI here. And we need to uh, end an ally here and start an ally here. So now when I go ahead and I refresh, we get exactly the same thing. Uh, so we've got UL, ally, ally, UL. So we've got our overall UL and two allies in the middle. And that's done with just using this. And the reason this works is when it implodes, it places this... Um, this uh, at the start of um, the element and then this at the... Uh, start of the element and then it uh, puts the error in and then we've obviously got these outer ones as well so there we go it's, it's we can do that within one line very simple so now we actually need to check whether there are any errors and then go ahead and, and output any errors if there are so let's go ahead and do that now I'm going to say um, if pull that down a bit if empty errors is equal to false ie if there are um, if there are any errors if we have any errors um, we are going to um, uh, loop through our errors and we've already established the way that we loop through the errors so that's fine so I'm gonna say uh, break out of PHP I'm gonna create a h2 tag I'm gonna say we tried to log you in but and then here I'm going to go ahead and we'll just do this within here and um, break in an echo output errors passing that errors variable so uh, now what's going to happen is I'm going to refresh repass that data we try to log you in but password too long username password combination is correct blah 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 so we'll type Alex and then just password one for example we get that username password combination is incorrect. If we log in successfully, it works. Okay, so that's this part here uh, redirecting us. So this has been a long and painful process, uh, but I just wanted to get over the logic of this. So we've got we've we've changed this around a bit where we've got our header just down here, um, and we've got uh, our logic at the top and then our output down here. We've created this function which loops through any errors that we have stored in an array um, and, and outputs them. And you, you might be asking yourself, why are we actually doing this? Well, it just makes it extremely easy for us to collect errors and display them. All we need to do now, is, if there are any errors, is just this. And this just checks if there are any errors. And otherwise, up here, we're 
uh, locating to a different page, setting the session, etc. So that's how we've done the uh, the error handling in, in the login and register script. Uh, I know it's been long, but hopefully you've learned something from this.